Hi, my name is Sergey Zhuk. I am presenting talk the key concepts of abstracting for developers. Uh, I came from Ukraine and joined the Lando team in 2015. Uh, I'm founder of editor of Pro Android Dev Medium Publications. Maybe some of you read it. I hope you do. And also you can follow me on Twitter at Sergey Zhuk. Uh, our company called Zalando, I think most of you know this company. We started from selling shoes in 2008, and now we're a company when, where more than 1,000 engineers work. 55% of all orders came from mobile clients, and uh, our Android application has 10 million downloads, so this requires uh, some effort to analyze user behavior uh, and to bring uh, the best possible experience to our users. What we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about tracking, and we'll start with defining what tracking is, why do you need to track data at all. <laughs> we're going to check when to track data, in which cases. Uh, we're going to check which tools you're going to use and why, in which conditions. And we're going to check some developer challenges, patterns, and pain points you may have or already had while you are doing tracking in your application. So, let's begin. Tracking. Why? Why do we need tracking? Pretty simple example. This is new Android app material design we moved in 2015. And it was guidelines, material, all things was good. And it has one thing, this float, floating action button. But what happened after we rolled out the app? We noticed that amount of orders decreased. We didn't know what was wrong with that and why it happened. And after checking tracking dashboards and checking the flows of users, we found that some users can't find a button to filter out things, and they cannot just find something they want to order. So we fixed it quickly and uh, go back to a good business. It was back to 2015. Nowadays, things are getting more interesting. Nowadays, is data-driven approach. So as maybe you know, some companies, and we do the same, are doing A-B tests for every new feature. It means that it makes sense to try user behavior on something new you're rolling out. Maybe your new feature will not bring uh, your <laughs> results, will not ma make them better. In that case, it's uh, super crucial to keep track of what user in is doing inside the app, uh, which actions user is doing, and uh, in which way user is using your new feature. And for this thing, uh, tracking is the main tool to give your insights about, about your business. But let's define, I'm saying tracking. Why I'm not saying analytics? In our opinion, there is two different things. Tracking is something which happens on your device. Analytics is something which happens uh, on the dashboards, so far away from mobile. So tr by tracking, I mean collecting and enriching the data, uh, data on your device, and then passing it to servers. And analytics, this is a process of analysis data and repre represent data. So this is something which may be different in, ter in terms, but uh, furthermore, in this talk, I will talk about tracking, so application client side, what's happening there. So next topic, when to track. First of all, uh, which kind of data it's good for you to collect? Always, this is application screens, when user opens the app, how they navigate the app, uh, which click and swipe gestures they are doing all, or, all over the app, and how long they stay in the app. Also, it can be crucial for you to keep track on uh, when user installs the app. You can use special tokens to find from which source user came to your app. Maybe they came from advertisement, or they just came from Play Store. This is something it's good for you to know. Another thing, when user uninstalls the app, it's also quite good for you to know and uh, maybe make some decisions. Another thing is, of course, system information, which can be easily collected by most of tools. And next thing is exceptions and crashes at brand crumbs. Breadcrumbs uh, can bring you crucial information about uh, things happening with your app in case of crash. It's also part of the tracking concept. Tracking tools. Which tools we going to use and why? First tool, kind of de facto standard in a web application business, and for a long time, the most used tools for application tracking as well for Android is Google Analytics. Uh, good thing about Google Analytics is that it brings two things together, web and mobile. For e-commerce business, this is a crucial benefit. Uh, it's free for not high-load projects, and 
It allows a lot of things for data analysts, including BigQuery. But one problem is, because probably you know about Firebase Analytics, uh, there were no big updates on Google Analytics since 2015. But, you know, I just went through a booth uh, of partners of the conference, and I found that Google Analytics is still in use and seems to be used for <laughs> some more time. Firebase, Google Analytics of Firebase. It's a completely different approach. System is mobile only. It's in active development. New features are coming all the time. Again, availability of BigQuery, it's and free as well. It's good for us. But if you are a small startup, you ha will have enough customer parameters. But if you are a big enterprise, you can quickly run out of custom dimensions supplied by Firebase. So take this into account. Another thing about Firebase, you need to notice that they does not officially support devices with, without Play services. Uh, this is kind of a tricky question, but you need to check it out when you go for, for example, China market, because in some conditions, they may not work there. But it's not the only tools you have, you know. Uh, a special thing about tracking is that quite often you add one tool, and then you need to add more tools. And sometimes your marketing or performance department or analyze, analyst department, they ask you to add one more extra tool for some one small feature. It happens quite often. It happens with uh, most of projects I know. And this is why you always need to be ready to scale your tracking logic. Another thing is there are different market parts of tools for different platforms. So like Flurry. Flurry is, for a long time, really commonly used tool for iOS. But for Android, it's not. And sometimes you need to negotiate hard with your analysts or data people, deciding which tool to take, because two platforms, and uh, things are getting tricky, because you need to put your data in one dashboard. So take it into account. Another way you can go is make your self-made tracking tool with Blackjack and maybe some other good things. <laughs> uh, this tool uh, can be really valuable to pass data in specific format for you, because most standard tracking tools, they provide data in key value pairs, which is not super convenient. Sometimes you need some complex data structures, right? And uh, moreover, it's super convenient in case if you need to integrate with your systems. If you have several layers, uh, maybe upstream, downstream, and also if you want to analyze data in real time. Real time data is an issue for most of uh, tracking systems, because even GA or Firebase, some data tapes are available with a delay. And another thing about uh, tools which are self-made is, of course, about privacy, because when you share your data, here are some conditions on which you share data about your user sessions with providers. But we'll come back to this topic. Patterns and challenges, the developer pain, what do you face with? First of all, in our experience, the most annoying thing was to agree on tracking standards. What should you track? Why? The thing is, we finally agreed that nobody should be blind. If you supply a new feature, then please align on minimum amount of features to be tracked, like screen view at least. Click on the button, minimum amount, but make it happen. Another funny thing is about constants. For example, if you send an empty string for some constant, does it mean that it's really empty? Or it means that something went wrong in your app. And maybe you need to indicate, it's better to indicate it with a constant, not with just empty, in case if you have really empty field. And my funny part, my, my favorite funny part is about uh, estimation of tracking. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, for some reason, some managers did not count uh, tracking as part of feature, and I think it's a mistake. So uh, it makes sense to talk with your managers, to not expect them at last day of the release, say, ah, yes, and please do tracking. <laughs> well, it's better to plan tracking from day one and estimate it accordingly. Next, something you should know about tools. First of all, most of tools send data in batches, not immediately. It's good for us, good for users, because uh, it's about battery issue and performance issue. So they collect data and send it longer than just in real time. And even after they send the data finally, you will not be able to see it immediately in dashboards, which may be annoying if you expect like a new release and you need to collect feedback quickly. At least not all data types will be available, maybe, uh, in the most tools. And the next thing, documentation. I would say it's the biggest issue of most tracking tools. 
documentation, they explain how to do API. Thanks for that. But then, you know, <laughs> you need to think how to integrate multiple tools. And this is something which quite often out of scope for uh, tracking tools. You just need to build your own bicycles, and it requires some effort. So next thing is a simple screen view tracking. You know, It's a nice marketing feature by some uh, tracking tools saying, OK, we track screens out of the box. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Let's check it out. So in most cases, it means only track the activity. But as you may know, you can have activity. You may have fragment. You may have view pager. You may have even views if you want to go so far. And in all these cases, better take care of screen view tracking by your own. Don't really trust it to, <laughs> to any tracking tools, because this is a super complex case, even if it looks simple. But even more, in case if you have a tracking of screen rotation, please think about how would you count when the device moved from portrait to landscape. Is it a new screen view or not? It's not just about fire the event on on start callback, right? Think about is it a new event or not? And then the funniest part, you will go to the ground and go back to foreground. Is it a new event or not? And this type of things, if they're not uh, agreed properly, they can just mess up your tracking data, especially if you have a startup with a small amount of screen views. They just can <laughs> create a mess in your data being tracked. So please take it into account. Regarding performance. Uh, things you need to check is about batching configuration. Quite often you can set up it, send longer, send faster. Makes sense to check it out. Minimize amount, minimize amount of data being sent. It's better to not mess up data because some tools trying to send dump of your of your system on every event, uh, like GA, Google Analytics sent uh, uh, like extra parameters, maybe like 10 or 12 extra parameters every time uh, when you send an event. So kind of. Uh, stateless approach. So take care of that. At least take it into account. Of course, it's super crucial to keep a separate token for uh, debug and release stuff. Because uh, again, if you're a small startup, you can easily mess up your tracking data if you don't keep tokens. And then check threading. Threading is funny stuff. You may say, come on, which threading? It's 2017. All tools have their own threads. What's the problem there? I will tell you the problem. The thing is, sometimes before, you send data to your tool, you need to prepare the data. Maybe using clean architecture, you have several layers. Then you also can enrich data, inject some specific parameters, or you need to track some specific cases when you scroll something. So please take care about separate thread before your tracking tool in case if you more or less implement big amount of tracking, not only, not only screen view. It makes sense to take care of that, because when you will scale, you will have you may have issue with performance uh, of your app. When I tell ability to scale, I also mean that uh, it makes sense to isolate your tracking logic from, um, from the application. This is something which was widely discussed uh, in several blog posts recently. I also wrote a blog post about that at Medium. So the idea behind it is to uh, keep tracking events separately from the UI logic and about having a dispatcher who will uh, basically uh, dispatch data to proper events for proper handlers who are subscribed on this type of events. So make it easy for you to connect and disconnect uh, tracking tools if, in case if you will have Firebase, uh, Google Analytics, WebTrack, something else. Please take care of adding new tools because requirement to add a new tracking tools, you know, <laughs> it comes really fast. Just take it into account. One custom tracking case example I'm going to show. One tracking is not so easy. This is example happened with us. It's about uh, detecting list items, which was good by user. What if I will tell you that you need to see if user really hold for some specific time, for example, 250 milliseconds, hold the list item in, a, in your recycler view. It becomes tricky because it requires case when user just move up and down. In case if user uh, came from background and uh, move an application to rotate the screen, right? A lot of contract things happen there. But the good thing is we have a solution for that. Check out my blog post. A nice solution with uh, Rx Java, uh, which was used for throttling uh, to properly put this logic all together. Check it out. Can be valuable for you. Yes, you took pictures. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Next thing is customer privacy, something which uh, I would say some projects unfortunately underestimate. But uh, in Europe, we need to take uh, these legal things quite, quite, quite serious. Uh, 
it's a big issue for tracking tools. Some of them uh, not enable uh, option to hide client IP address by default, and this can be counted as uh, a violation of privacy because by design data should be anonymized, right? This is why tracking is used. So please take care to hide your IP address. And another thing is, uh, using in some in some cases in some countries you need to also take care about suggesting an option to opt out from tracking. You really need to be ready to, uh, to switch off the tracking by the request of user. So please, please take it serious, it's illegal stuff. And one more question. Any ideas why most of tracking tools are free? What's happening there? Why it's so charity coming to us? <laughs> Any opinions here? Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> data being collected all the time. That's why companies, uh, companies behind analytics tools are Google, uh, Twitter. So all companies, also Facebook, doing their business there. Uh, companies who are touching data, they <laughs> they really want to know a lot. Uh, data sharing. Uh, in most of tools, you can go to some separate option on some faraway backdoor screen and find the option to switch off sharing your application data with their business. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> this world, <laughs> uh, it's better to think about that before. And uh, this is why some companies uh, decided to build their own tracking tools because of this security policy. Another funny thing is uh, some users may install special apps to kill tracking. So I found there are some applications which user may install to really block all ways how tracking data being reports. So well, <laughs> it's another way to protect yourself in some cases. Uh, next thing, how to test tracking output. I would say test tracking output is the most painful part of all work with tracking. Why? Because you really need to read a lot of logs and uh, analyze them and find the way how to automate it. The simplest way is to uh, print logs in debug, just add some log debug something. Well, <laughs> of course, it can be good for development for a short time, but this will not work if you have a regression test, right? And you need to check the release build and see how actually application goes through your flows. Um, so just a simple uh, first entry point. Next thing, the most hardcore way, is to go for a, a proxy. In case of proxy, yes, you will catch all your packages uh, and really see what's being sent to, to your analytics systems. I would tell you this is the most reliable way. You really, re really can do well with this, but <laughs> you will feel pain because of batching of events, because of amount of events. It would be super tricky, but it really works. A simple way. Another thing is, uh, debug logs, this is what I like about Google tools, Firebase and GA, you may enable, using shell, you may enable not logs for your app, but logs as system set property in uh, your system, and in this way, they will print all logs, even for live application, for release build, and they're quite convenient to read, and they are real-time logs. It means that you don't need to wait maybe a minute or five minutes uh, to get a batch which will be sent. This tool, if you will make some more steps and uh, read uh, uh, these logs using scripts to make them in more readable format, you can achieve, you can make it really good uh, step to automate, uh, automate this uh, process. Our team is working on tool which will uh, uh, automate uh, testing the tracking with these logs and uh, uh, with UI interaction, and I hope we will announce it later this month. One more thing is about tracking output for debug needs. I would say it's a leap ahead. This is something which was offered by Firebase, called Firebase Debug View. This thing is available only uh, for debug machine. What it offers is a real-time timeline of all events being sent, uh, all events sent to your uh, uh, analytic tool for specified device. Uh, with this thing, you can debug uh, Quite, in quite convenient way, and uh, basically see the result really fast without any stop on the device. Super good thing. To sum up what I said is, uh, first of all, always cover new app features with tracking. 
uh, take care of tracking is valuable for your business and uh, valuable for you as for developer to understand how you actually user use your app, not like you use your app because it may be different from what users users are doing with your app. Uh, next thing is one tracking tool is never enough. Please be ready, uh, ready, ready to scale because. Uh, <laughs> uh, new requirements will just arrive one day, and they will want it really, really fast. With the debug and the QA, yes, it's the biggest pain point. This is thing which um, I think uh, is kind of underestimated because uh, uh, most uh, teams do not do a regression test on tracking. And I wish, uh, I wish uh, we may do, and it's uh, a long conversation between our teams and uh, data analyst teams. And we're, as I said, we're working on tool to automate this process. And the last thing is, last but not least, is to respect customer privacy, because this is a, a crucial point for your business and uh, for your customer experience. Thanks. Uh, let's stay in touch. And, uh, I'm, I would be happy to answer questions. Yeah, I see first book. Yes. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, so do you track app uninstalls? And if yes, then how? Uh, uninstalls being tracked, uh, I think, by Google Analytics set up with custom token, and I think here is one more tool called, uh, I think it's, it's adjust, so uh, there are several tools who may trace the app behavior. Uh, this is something coming from SDK, so you don't need to implement anything on the application side. If you want, uh, I can just write down your name, I will ask our analysts, like what, what kind of, which tool specifically they're using for that, and uh, we'll get back to you. Okay. okay, cool, so let's then chill out. Any more questions? So do you use uh, some custom solution for tracking or just the Google Analytics or Firebase Analytics? I uh, mean in our company. You hmm? mean in our company, in no, Zalando. I mean, uh, do you use it um, uh, or implement a custom tracking solution? Yes, we did, uh, we did custom tracking. But uh, well, the thing is, uh, it's nice to migrate completely to custom solution, it's kind of, I think it's a good way to scale your, for your business needs, but now we still keep both. We have some custom stuff, basically our API endpoints for some real-time data and both GA and some other tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions there? Uh -huh. Yes, please. Uh, I'm not analytics guy, but uh, like one single screen view is not used useful to know more data. So I want to know like the journey of the user since he enters my app till he leaves, and then aggregate this for like millions of users or thousands of users. So sorry, I don't hear you really <laughs> well. The question is uh, use of a screen view for no. Like my question is like if I track one screen view or like yeah. one click, it yeah. doesn't give too much value. So. As, as I understand from my perspective as a developer, not as a marketing guy. So I imagine that it would be like the, the value comes from analyzing the whole scenario when the user enters the app and when he leaves, so yes. you can understand why he left. Maybe it's like a scenario, and also like aggregating this to like thousands of users um, of my yeah, app. Yeah. So so where, where does this happen? Like, is it big query or is it analytics or? Uh, this is something which uh, may build even using UI stuff of Google Analytics dashboard, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, flows of users. It's one thing, and now it's getting even better in Firebase, as far as I know. Uh, but I wouldn't say that even uh, amount of clicks. So, if in case if you, for example, from one release to to another, you may compare click ratio on some buttons. And in that case, like you move the button, and then half of users don't click button anymore, <laughs> right? Yeah. So this is how it was for our case of filters when we implemented material design. So I would say it makes sense to count it, but you are right that it's super valuable data is to analyze it the whole flow. So well, I would tell you that there are <laughs> my colleagues did these talks uh, for uh, analysts, so there is quite complex uh, solutions uh, how to build this flow. So it's not something which I'm as Android developer. Uh, <laughs> Taking care a lot, to be honest. Okay, thanks. Thank you. 
Any more questions? No? No? Okay, then thanks. Have a great conference. See you around. <laughs> <laughs>